Hiya, I'm Kaylee Knopp, I'm a biomedical scientist at the Histology Lab here in Royal Sussex County Hospital in Brighton and I'm here to give you a microtomy tutorial. Um, this tutorial is good for beginners who've never seen a microtome before or even for competent staff who are looking to review their knowledge as part of continuing professional development. Um, the topics I'll be covering today include the parts of the microtome, the health and safety considerations surrounding microtomy, and then I'll go through trimming the block, sectioning the block, and any tips and tricks I've picked up along the way. Now, I'll be covering lots of information today. Remember, you can re-watch, rewind, review this video at any time. It's all under your speed, okay? And remember that microtomy is a skill, and it will take practice. But watching this video should put you on the right track to becoming a competent microtomist. Okay, so this is our microtome. This is your flywheel. As you turn this, the block holder or chuck goes up and down and at the apex of the turn it advances forward, takes a slice, comes up, advances forward, takes a slice, comes up, comes forward, takes a slice. On your flywheel there are two locks, here and here. This one goes side to side, unlock to turn. You want to lock this if your fingers are going anywhere near this part of the microtome. Okay, and this one is a secondary lock. Flip it up, even if you're unlocked, you won't go anywhere. To change how much the block advances, you'll use this. This is your micron adjustment. Each one of these lines pertains to roughly a micron thick. So as you turn it up, the thickness will turn up. This is your coarse trimming toggle. Different microtomes will have different levels. This one here, one click is 10 microns, two clicks is 30 microns. This is your manual coarse trimming hand wheel. Taking it backwards takes the chuck backwards and taking it forwards takes the chuck forwards. Here we have your waste tray. This comes off. Often it's attached by a magnet so you have to give it a little bit of a tug to come off. Now this is your stage, okay? This is your knife holder and your blade guard. This goes up for safety across the blade. This slot here holds your blade. At the moment I do not have a blade in here so I can touch that. This plate here is loosened by this lock, locked, unlocked. To take this plate off to clean, take this out. Some microtomes will also have this locking bolt. This comes off when you need to clean. Then you can clean all in here. Okay. It's important to have a clean microtome so that it functions correctly. Okay. We can put this back on. Hold this on here. Slide the bolt back in. And then your lock. And now it will still locked, unlocked. Okay. Now, at the moment, this knife holder doesn't go anywhere, but we can unlock this lock to move it side to side or even to take it off. Okay, so this is also for cleaning. This uh, track here will need to be clean. All of this will need to be cleaned so that your microtome functions correctly. Now, this lock down here, unlock this. This slides this way and this way to bring your knife holder closer or further away from your chuck. This also comes off. You'll see on here that it has zero degrees, five degrees, and 10 degrees. You want it on five degrees, this middle line, okay? Changing this changes the angle at which the knife goes through the specimen, okay? The optimal angle is this one here. With the microtome come two tools. This tool is thinner than this one. This one is normally kept on a magnet behind your microtome. This thinner tool on the opposite side to your lock, there will be a hole, OK? 
okay? To change the angle on this, which you're very unlikely to need, however, taking this plate off will be good for cleaning. Insert this, turn, about half a turn, this will slide off, okay? Now, you wanna make sure that there's no wax buildup in any of these parts, okay? To clean these parts, you can either use a tissue and go around, okay? Or you can use a brush to get to those hard to get to areas, okay? First of all, you can brush dry to brush any particles away, or you can use a degreaser, such as the toxane, to wipe away the wax. Now, you can clean a microtray with xylene. This is highly unrecommended due to the carcinogenic nature of xylene. If you do wish to clean these parts with xylene, do it over a ventilated bench with the appropriate PPE. Histology companies sell degreasers with a lower toxicity so that you can keep yourself safe when you're cleaning your microtope. This tool can also be used to loosen this nut here, which slides the block holder off. This is both useful for cleaning, but it is also useful to place the mega block chuck and just tighten that there. This is for blocks such as these. This is for blocks such as these. So we've cleaned this to keep our microtome running smoothly. We're going to lock it at this, this line here in the middle. Okay, do it as tight. Make sure that it doesn't move. I'm gonna slide that back on. Use this lock to lock it in place. There we go. Slide this back on. Go with this lock. Okay, now we're going to talk about how to set up your workstation. This is very important to prevent repetitive strain injury. Okay, so normally we would do health and safety assessments for dis display screen equipment, i.e., sitting at a computer. We're going to apply these same principles to sitting at a microtome. Okay, so First of all, we're going to sit with our back straight on the correct chair with our feet on the floor as we would at a computer. We're going to make sure that our, sit, our chair is at the right height so that our elbows are level with the table. We're going to be directly in front of our microtome. And when we turn the flywheel here, we're going to make sure that we don't overstretch our arm or that we don't see ourselves making too much wrist movement, okay? You'll see many microscopists that use this technique with the flywheel. You want to avoid this to prevent repetitive strain in your wrist. For me, I don't have a very long reach, so what I do is I turn my microtome slightly here, and that means that when I turn the flywheel as I'm straight on, very natural movement. Okay? I spread the weight between my wrist, my elbow, my shoulder to prevent any repetitive strain in any of these joints. Okay? And I make sure that my wrist is always straight. Okay? Now I think about the position of my cold plate and my water bath. My cold plate for cooling down my blocks is on my right hand side. This side is for putting in your blocks, like so, and for filing your blocks, okay? Your left hand is for your water bath. As you sit straight on to the microtome, you're gonna have your water bath at a 45 degree angle with your hand just resting over the water, okay? So there's no overstretching. Note that I'm not left-handed, I'm right-handed, and I'm still using my water bath with my left hand. Note, this is what I feel is the most ergonomic way of working. In the end, it's about what's comfortable for you and what prevents you from injury.